focus today will be on the Fundamental U, 17U UA Rise team as a whole. I have mentioned in the past, and we'll do some individual breakdowns, but also some breakdowns on teams uh, that are really impressed kind of with their all-around play. So this Fundamental U team right now is 9-0 in UA Rise play. Uh, they play DTO Elite in this game we're going to look at from a few weeks ago. A DTO Elite is 5-4 and four right now. They ended up losing pretty handily to Fundamental U here, but their other three losses were pretty tight, so they very well could have been you know, an 8-1 team in the UA Rise in this first session. Uh, we're going to look at some of the ball movement, uh, some of the defense, particularly with the positioning and the activity, uh, and kind of just the all-around team play that really stands out for Fundamental U. So here... We're about, you know, halfway through that first quarter. We're going to look at two stretches uh, versus just the one five-minute stretch. We're going to look at one stretch in the first half and then one stretch in the second half, um, about four or five minutes of gameplay each, uh, and kind of break down the different stuff that kind of stands out about this fundamental U team. So here they got a baseline out of bounds. One thing I think that really stands out about Fundamental U from the jump is how quickly they move into their stuff. I mean, there's no delay. The reason they get a lot of the openings that you're going to see is because you got guys screening hard, cutting hard, and really spacing the court. So here, get a back screen for Schaller, and then a little down screen for Braden Carlson to come up, get a three off of that. Now, so far, UA rise-wise on the second session, uh, Brayden Carlson was on the second team. It's been terrific for Fundamental U all spring. Uh, just a great all-around score, and you'll see that to an extent here. Um, but that's a really good set, you know, kind of based on out of bounds, getting a shot off of that. All right, so got a missed jump shot there. Ball saved. Good kick out. It's a quality look. You'll take that anytime. On the offensive glass. So, you know, this is a team overall, they're not the biggest. So, you know, Nick Taylor typically starts at the five. He's about six foot seven. Uh, Pat Schaller, obviously a great athlete going to Northwestern for football. Uh, he's about, you know, six, 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 seven as well. But no, you know, Giants, but they are very good getting on the glass. All the guards get in there and do some work on the glass. One's going to be saved. So transition half court, their defensive positioning is different than a lot of other teams, whether it's, you know, 17U, UA Rise, UAA, EYBL, Adidas. This is one of the best help side defensive teams that I've seen so far this spring. All right, so we see the ball get skipped. Ball's in the air. We got guys jumping to the help side. Good one-on-one -on -one defense there. And then that's a good contest. Everything gets contested. Everybody goes to the glass. And there's communication all over the place. Here we see Carlson getting downhill and scoring there. Uh, very opportunistic as a scorer. He finds different ways to get shots. Um, obviously a very good shooter. But, you know, he really gets things going at the rim. Very good pull-up shooter. And obviously excellent from the three-point range. Uh, and that's really fundamentally used defense into offense. So again, we see a ball screen coming. So weak side here, there's always a low man active for fundamental use. So they're always going to have somebody with a couple feet in the paint ready to get help here. So as we got this high ball screen coming, you see we got Owen underneath the basket here. It's a good guard-to-guard -guard switch. They switch a lot of the actions against this team. And then there's your six foot seven, six foot six, you know, football player going up and contesting the shot. Uh, Shadler does a really good job walling up around the paint, gets on the glass well. Uh, and again, any team is going to have a hard time scoring in the paint when you contest like that and you always have bodies there. There's not a lot of high schoolers that are skilled at scoring through contact like that. So DTO Elite had a couple uh, stretches where they really tried to get into the press. Obviously, it was tough. They didn't get as many uh, made baskets and dead ball opportunities for it, but uh, wasn't really a intense press, kind of more of a token. So, again, we see this chin action. Got that little back screen. 
They're going to get a reverse. Here comes another cross screen, down screen action. It's a good activity there. They're going to get a foul. So the reason the reason why these actions work so well for Fundamental U, again, like we mentioned right off the jump, the cutting and the spacing. So the ball gets reversed. We got Carlson looping out around, getting ready to set his back screen. You're going to see Logan Feller is going to come pop out to the wing. As the ball's moving, they're going to cut and set their screens. So this is a well-angled diagonal screen here. You're going to see J.J. Hernandez is going right to the block. And then they will still have that finish for uh, Pat Schaller to go set this down screen at the end. Which, again, small thing that opens up a one-on-one -on -one in the post because you can't lead the guy who's been hitting the threes. He's coming off of this. Uh, Schaller's guy could go double, but again, that's not a you know standard position for the big to be defensively. So they're going to get to the free throw line there. And, you know, overall, fundamental you in this game, uh, first quarter, and we're still in it. It's 8-12, to 8-13 to 13 after that made free throw. Uh, you know, they didn't necessarily come out of the gates blowing them out. But to me, a sign of a really good team is one who doesn't let their defense dwindle regardless of if their shots are falling or not. So you don't really build a lead unless you get stops. Just from any game you play, if you give up points and you score points, unless you're making a bunch of threes and giving up a bunch of twos, it's going to be hard to extend that lead. They really built on a lot of stops, and that was because of the quality defense. Here we go again. J.J. Hernandez, two feet in the paint, all the way over in the help. Logan Feller, two feet in the paint. You're going to get a ball screen. And it's very difficult for you to be able to get any actions going when everything is clogged up in the middle of the lane. And here, that's a solid contest. Again, I know Braden Carlson is known probably more of a shooter, scorer than anything else. Very rock solid on the defensive end as well. So here, ISO to one-on-one. -on -one. It's easy for you to play defense kind of pressured like this when you do know you have the quality help. But again, here, it's a shot contest. Now, you know, DTR elite guard probably should be taking a left-handed layup here, but that's he's getting a hand on that basketball because he's not giving up on the play. So it's a ton of second effort stuff all over the place, on ball, off the ball. Uh, just rotations all over. So here we're going to see, you know, that kind of token press again. You see here, they just get it into J.J. Hernandez. The one benefit that I think, you know, obviously, like I said, they don't have a ton of bigs. There's a lot of guys on this team that can take it end to end. They can go off of rebounds and kind of create the break if they need to. So here we got another one of those. Same thing here. Difference now, instead of getting that single screen, it's going to be an elevator. Great job getting his feet set. And again, to me, that's that's a college action, and that's excellent footwork on Carlson's part. Well set up. Again, this team executes their stuff. They're not 9-0 for no reason. They get it reversed. Now, remember, this is, this is stacking play to play, right? Remember that last play? It was the diagonal screen. They got J.J. going to the block. He got a post touch. He actually went all the way to the block on that diagonal screen. Here, same type of action. Now the difference is instead of J.J. coming off of that diagonal screen, you're going to see Braden's coming right up through that elevator, and he's going to get it to the top of the key. They were not ready to guard that at all, right? What is this defender thinking? I'm getting another diagonal screen. I'm going to meet him at the block again, right? Because it worked decently fine the last time. They ended up fouling. Now... He's not chasing Carlson up because he's expecting that diagonal screen. They set the elevator, good screens up top, and then that's a pure shooter just knocking down an open one. And again, now it's 17-8. You're seeing how that's building. Defensively, they're getting stops. Contesting everything. Nothing is easy. See the ball on the wing, right? JJ's going over to get two feet in the paint. Here, you know, throughout this game, there was a lot of uh, – kind of situations where this big in particular was getting uh, kind of seals down low. I thought the guards in general for fundamental two did a pretty good job when they were switching a fighting down there so he didn't get deep paint touches. But, I mean, that's a solid big. He had, has good moves down there. 
in those situations, and we'll see it kind of later on, really all that you can do is try to front, make it difficult, and make him catch it as far away from the basket as possible, and then hope that, you know, a JJ or a Scheller or, you know, Nick Taylor can come over to help on that. So again, back-to-back plays, they went diagonal screen to get it on the block, then went elevator right off of that in that same type of action. You see a little bit of side-to-side. That's a quality look. Good three-point shooter. And then activity. Activity all over the place. Very small details here. Hernandez has a great wingspan, really good reach, but he also does a good job of making it difficult on guys. If he makes a standard pass here that's getting deflected and that's going to be a dunk in transition, because JJ's in that gap, now he's got to catch it out of the volleyball line, and that's not within scoring range. Again, active hands. Feet moving. Braden's got two feet in the paint. Tommy Aberle's got two feet in the paint. JJ Hernandez is loaded up. There's no driving lanes here. If he wants to go baseline, he's going to have a little bit of help, and the paint is completely clogged. And again, look where they're catching the ball within the offense. And then again, they, they got to settle for that three. Because when there's, there's no paint touches available, and there's not really a lot of opportunities to get easy downhill drives, a general high school team is going to settle for those jump shots. And again, they do a pretty good job of contesting most of these looks. All right, so we got another set coming here. So let's see what this is. All right, they're getting up to the top from Nick Taylor. Got about 10 seconds left. I love that pass. And, and that's just patience. And I think, you know, Logan Feller at times has kind of been a de facto point guard for them. Uh, he handles pressure pretty well. Uh, doesn't really turn the ball over much. He is, you know, a very, very high IQ player. Here, this is just knowing time and score, right? Shot clock is off. All right, there's about 10 seconds or so, if you guys can't see that. Um, there's about 10 seconds or so left. Patient. Probing. Now, obviously, this is a defensive breakdown for DTO Elite. But when you got the guy in Braden Carlson coming off this pin down, I understand why they might chase that, right? Because you know if you're the DTO Elite, you're not trying to give up another three. So that's patience. It's a great job showing your hands at the rim. He actually had Hernandez and Nick Taylor at the rim. And that's a nice way to end the quarter if you're fundamental you. All right, so we'll go a couple minutes into the second quarter, and then we'll jump out to the second half of this game. So we'll skip ahead a little bit. And again, at this point, it's 19-11 after that layup that uh, Nick Taylor got at the end of the first quarter. And again, the speed, we'll go back a little bit, just the speed that everyone in this offense moves with. So you see, as soon as Braden Carlson inbounds his pass, he is sprinting all the way off of this screen from Blakely to try to get the basketball. And that, because he's sprinting off of that and Blakely sets a good screen, now Blakely's wide open to catch the ball. And they're catching it. If you compare and contrast between where they're catching it, where DTO Elite's catching it, they're catching everything at the three-point line. DTO Elite's catching everything at the volleyball line from 25 feet and out. Right? And now he gets a good catch. And like I said, he can score the basketball from all over the floor. This is good offense. This is very efficient off the catch, though. Right? I think a lot of times kids catch it in this situation and think they need to probe but they need to make some type of combo move to set the guy up. You catch it. J.J. Hernandez does a good job on setting this initial screen. It basically just turns into a step up. Attack open space. You got decent length at the front of the rim. Just keep it simple. 
right? Again, he can hit the pull-ups, he can hit the threes, but that's just an efficient decision. That's a lot of good screens within the offense, and that's a lot of guys just making the right basketball plays. Okay, so here again, this is what I mean, and I think I talked about this a little bit in that first quarter. Blakely right now was giving up at least, you know, five or six inches here. This is a big kid. He is fighting to get positioning here, right? All you can ask of a guard, especially a point guard like Blakely is, is to work. And then look at this collapse. I mean, that's that's just winning basketball all over the place. That's activity, and, you know, we'll see the end of that possession. But right now, DTO Elite knows there's a mismatch down low, right? Carlson's pinching. You're going to see Feller pinch. This is a bu- these are three guards all attacking the basketball up in the air to try to help out Blakely, and that forces him to make that pass. And then you see Taylor recovers. J.J. Hernandez gets a hand on that. This is just guys flying around all over the court. And look at the recovery. Right? Even if he makes that shot, to me, that's a terrific defensive possession. Right? You do the work to front, which a lot of guards don't do. A lot of guards say, Coach, I'm too small. I don't know what to do down there. He is working to get position here. So that's a terrific job by Blakely. Great job collapsing. Watch Nick Taylor on the weak side. This is supposed to be a dump off layup. Right? If they send three guys at the ball, this should be a layup. Nope, he's taking that away because he's sprinting down the weak side. JJ Hernandez is moving too, right? So this next pass, that could be a scoring opportunity. <laughs> nope, gets a hand on it. And they're still going. Collapse, hands, and then watch Carlson on the closeout. It's a hand right in his face. That's a beautiful defensive possession. Going to get a travel call there. Again, I like I like J.J. Hernandez being aggressive, looking to get to the paint, though. Uh, especially with his long strides and when he has straight lines like that. I think, you know, you live with a travel here or there off of that. Good. That's a good pick and roll defense. Another good shot contest. Now I got to finish that with a rebound, but it's pretty solid rotations. Again, a lot of this stuff is switching all over the place. There's enough athletes. There's enough guys who are willing to help each other out. Now this has to be a little bit quicker of a tag, and I'd like to see him get bumped a little bit more on that roll. So again, they've done a pretty good job at this point. DTO Elite's been stuck at 11 for a while. Right, but on this screen, especially because you know you're switching, right? So you know now you're going big to guard on your switch. Blakely's going to have their center rim running. Here, if I am Feller, uh, you know, personnel based, maybe Carlson in this case, you got to bump him before he gets down to the block. I would say ideally by this between the second and third halves, you want to make contact. So at least then you give Blakely an opportunity to get back in position. And if he's going to front, you can try to sandwich there a little bit. It's a pretty well-timed pass, but their help sidewise, Carlson's got to be a little bit over more, and they probably have to do a little bit better job bumping when he comes off of that. Love that pass. You know, Nick Taylor is really, this whole spring, he's been dominant scoring on the block as well. It's just a good decision, right? Ball goes in, you move. That's the easiest time to get layups and wide open threes if you know how to move off of post entries. Here it's Blakely who makes the entry pass. He's coming baseline. Sorry, he's going to screen away for Feller, and then Feller's going to get that. That's constant movement. So to be able to get into that split, whether or not that was a or that was just a decision that was made within the offense. It's good basketball either way, right? Ball goes in, set that little split screen, comes back to the basketball, and he curls it all the way through. And then for Taylor to have the presence of mind to give him that dump off, that's that's good basketball. At this point, it's only a 10-point game, you know, 23-13. to 13. DT Elites had to work for that 13, though. Again, more guard-to-guard switches. 
there we go again with that uh, guard to big switch. So, you know, this is going to be a tough spot for Blakely because you got the big run into the front of the rim. Uh, we'll see what ends up happening on this possession. But, you know, that does leave you susceptible to that offensive rebound. Obviously, the weak side guy wasn't able to corral it on that occasion. Really good shot fake. Love that. That's great ball movement. That's great ball movement. Just that's that's completely, you know, no pun intended. That's fundamental basketball. Shot fake, drive hard. They overhelp, kick it out. Patience, drive, draw two, kick, reverse it one more time. Nick Taylor, Blakely, let's catch the top of the key. That's as good a ball movement as you're going to see, particularly in AAU basketball. All right, so now they got up to 13 points. I'll stay on the ground there. Then, like I said, anybody who gets it can go. I mean, that's Nick Taylor, who is the quote-unquote five, getting that and pushing. Again, that's a quality look, especially with the way that you know, Braden's been shooting it in this game. Oh, with this big going downhill, though, that that's, again, you do have that kind of threat when you don't necessarily have a ton of bigs. But like if I would want to, given the size on the court for Funimal U, want to start jamming him before he can get that deep into the paint. So, like, at that point, it's a little bit too late. Now, they are going to get away with it because he is going to walk there. And that is because they did send that extra help. And once he did catch it, you did what you could. You know, show your hands, try to be active in there. And then that got him to speed up his footwork. All right, we'll speed up a little bit past this. And again, for the most part, this was a, you know, seven-man Kind of rotation, seven, eight man rotation for uh, Fundamental U with just who they had at the tournament. I thought they did a really good job, you know, playing with the same intensity, even without guys. That's another great interior pass. And again, this is, it's both the movement and it's the ability to make a pass. So it's the same kind of start. You know, they kind of get their little flare screen in the same action they normally run nothing there they enter it okay so on this initial cut this is why it's important that as guys are moving off the ball you don't just stop your cut because you don't get it initially so if we see here Tommy Aberley's not really going to get it until he kind of curls back to this right hand side Nick Taylor does a great job of being patient and not forcing anything so look he didn't get it on the first cut but now because he drove that gap now Tommy's guy stepped up Great job cutting along the baseline. And again, you cannot undersell the value of having a great three-point shooter here that they can't help off of and having guys who understand how to space. That opened that whole thing up. And then, again, that's a really good interior pass from Nick Taylor. All right, so that's all we'll look at for this first half. We're going to skip over to the second half. Uh, for a little bit, uh, let's go to go to about 6.15. So again, we'll watch about five minutes of game from worth of the second half. It's a good entry there. And again, basic, simple offense, right? You get moving. You set a nice cross screen. You get a layup. Fowler does a great job of body seeking there to get that screen. And then that allows Nick Taylor to go underneath. And then he's just, he's a workhorse in the paint. Like absolute force anytime he gets the ball that close. Uh, plays way bigger than six foot seven. I mean, that's really helped them a lot, especially with his ability to put the ball on the ground and defend like he does. Again, that's the whole. You know, it's the, the guard to big. This kid, I thought, did a pretty good job of attacking that. Personally, if he is taking a 
kind of 12 foot hook shot. I would consider that if I'm Blakely a win. It's not necessarily the easiest shot. I know it can't be that contested when you're that big, but um, you know, kind of that same thing, targeting those two bigs defensively to make sure that they're not able to get that many open looks. And at this point, just for context, it's about a 19 point game. It's a good skip. It's a really quick release. Again, this is off of a made shot. So you're going to see Nick Taylor is going to flash up. Now, let's go back a little bit more. Watch. Keep an eye on how Braden Carlson's moving off the basketball here, right? He's going to be the one who receives this initial kind of back screen. And then because of that solidly set screen, Nick Taylor's going to get open. They just completely lose him. I mean, he probably could have stayed here and just gotten a layup too. This is another situation. Similar to the earlier pass, Nick Taylor lets things develop. And then that's just that's a jet quick release. Get that off that quickly. I mean, I, I wouldn't consider that an open three. There's still a guy sprinting out at him. Doesn't really affect it because he does get his feet set pretty quickly. Um, and that extended this lead up to 22 now. Again, let's keep watching that fight and positioning on the inside. So they're going to score on that one. But, okay, let's see as the ball goes away where everybody's at. So, there, Braden Carlson kind of stunts. I think they're going to end up getting a, a legal screen here. Or maybe he was out of bounds. I couldn't tell off of this. I think he stepped out of bounds, actually. So, only thing I would change here defensively if I'm fun of you is, I would say, if Carlson is going to help, he should commit to that. I know this big had been scoring a little bit. And then in this case, I think they did a pretty good job of protecting both sides of the rim. I think Feller would have been able to get a pretty good contest. Obviously, he had to step out of bounds to get an angle to score that. All right, so let's see. Again, a lot of wing entries for these guys. Uh, they do a lot of stuff off of this kind of chin action, a lot of back screens. It's a good skip again from Nick Taylor. Only thing here, you know, don't post in the same sandbox. So here I, I love when guys cut. I'd rather have two guys cut to the same spot than nobody move at all. But here it looked like Nick and Brian both saw the same opening. What that did do, though, is that allowed J.J. to get downhill to his right hand. Then that's a good kick out. We'll get the free throws off of that. Again, quick decisions, really quick reads. I think I mentioned uh, kind of in that for first half. Uh, the way that Feller kind of processes things, you know, I don't think he does anything that necessarily jumps out at you in terms of, you know, being a freak athlete or – you know, being a flashy playmaker or anything like that, but everything is just solid. Like that's a split second decision off of this loose ball, and then you have the wherewithal to know where your shooters are at. I mean, that's a nice pass. He's gonna get clipped a little bit there, so we'll skip past some of these free throws. But again, it's just a lot of sound decisions kind of throughout for this fundamental U team. And again, there's just so much balance and so many different guys that can really hurt you. It's up to 24 now with the lead. I'd say stay in front of the ball a little bit better there. I would say on both ends, and they're going to give up that offensive rebound. So here, I think I think J.J. Hernandez has the chance to be a special college defender. He's obviously a very good uh, high school defender already. I think he's the type of guy who I could see in three or four years, you know, you saying, I just need you to shut down the other team's star play. And that not being an issue. And he's going to be a kid who's going to get a lot of scholarship looks. So here he kind of gets screened. If Nick Taylor, talk to him a little bit more. Right? It's not a bad job collapsing. You do force him baseline. That is a tougher shot. Uh, but do a little bit better job staying in front of the ball, communicating on that. And then their big kind of got on the glass there. Again, as you've noticed, their bigs are really the only ones who could get anything. And that wasn't even that consistent. I mean, they only have 25 at this point. But... Uh, 
you know, taking away a little bit of those drives would be huge. Love that shot. And again, this this off ball action is so difficult to guard. You you could you could scheme for it, you could game plan for it. Having the the patience and the discipline to not leave shooters or turn your head when the ball goes to the post is so difficult to do. You look at teams like Golden State and uh Denver does it a good amount. I mean, if the ball goes in like this, your natural reaction is to turn in. How about this sprint? Let's even go back a little bit further. Again, let's watch Brayden Carlson sprint off of this. He started in the deep corner here. He's going to end up doing a complete run around, a full circle to get the ball back off of this and hit that pull up. So ball goes in. Feller comes and sets this. One dribble. Balance. Good elevation on that. Then he gets right up into his pull-up. I mean, that's a tough shot to make, uh, kind of going off. I know he's open on this, but that's not. I know some of these shots, it's looking pretty easy for him. The lift up into that is not that easy for a lot of kids. All right, we're going to see about a minute passed and got about a couple minutes left in this. This is a very good stretch uh, offensively for Fundamental U coming up. Um, again, there was about a minute between when we did the last clip and this one. So just watch how the ball is moving crisply across all over the place. All right, quick decisions. Good kick out. Good extra pass. There. Good job adjusting, getting out of that driver lane, but... Uh, maybe Braden could have waited a little bit before he made his attack. So on this, I mean, I'd say that's a tough shot. I think he's been getting really good ones to this point. But on this, on this kick out. So if if I'm Braden, my here are my two options. If I see he's cutting, I need to attack right at where he's exiting. So this help would be gone if JJ spaces out. This is basically a driving kick. You can go get your pull up going right. He went a little too early, so he ended up kind of driving into the cut. So I would have said it would have been better to go right just because that's where the guy was exiting. There was going to be, you know, those extra help defenders. And then this is a shot that he can make. A little bit tougher one. Maybe faded a little bit more than he would like to. Um, but, you know, again, that's really just a patience and waiting to see what lanes open up here got to finish that with the rebound good job ripping that it's a good pass so we probably haven't talked about owen too much but you want to talk about a point guard who just makes the right decisions with the ball everyone likes to say they have floor generals like he the assist to turnover ratio that he's had so far in UA games is ridiculous. Uh, and he comes off the bench, and it's great decision after great decision. Do nothing is forced. A lot of times it's just, oh, that's just a simple pass. But a lot of times kids won't be willing to make that. He pushes pace with a purpose. If you don't step over, he'll make a layup. But here, I mean, that's just a good pass. And everything is with pace. Everything has a reason. There's no wasted movement when he has the basketball, and he's looking to get other guys' shots, and that's something that you have to appreciate. I'm living with that shot. Yeah, you're definitely going to live with that shot. And then look, out and running again. Ah, maybe an, I think as good of a finisher as Nick Taylor is, I would say this is a I'm getting it and I'm going through your chest type of deal. I know that kid's big. Go through him. He, he he does such a good job getting to the free throw line as well. Um, as you guys have noticed, he's made, he's made a lot of really good passes. But I would say in that situation, you know, go go see what you can do up at the rim. Obviously, you're up by a good amount there. Now, here, I've been speaking really highly of fundamental use defense. Here, that's a tough spot. You had three or four guys in the paint. If I'm Brady Carlson here, I need to make you give the basketball – up. I can't let that be the guy that scores. I know it's already a bad situation because it's, you know, four and one at this point. I got to make you make that pass because you making the extra pass 
knowing the way that some of these other guys get back into the play and sprint, because fundamentally you is sprinting back on defense. You force one pass, maybe they bumble that pass. That maybe gives Owen a chance to come get back in the play. So, you know, if he's not going to take a charge there, try to force that extra one there if you can. Then they get it up and out quick. Again, that pass up through the slot. Uh, just going to be a little bit cleaner with that. Ball's going to go out of bounds there. Looks like they're bringing in another one of their bigs. Blake League's going to come in here. Again, here's kind of that token press. When Owen has the ball, I don't really think, you know, there's good defenders. He's so confident with it, I don't really think much ball pressure is going to do too much to affect his rhythm. But, again, with the score, I understand it. Love a good chin, chin flare. And again, they run this a lot, but because there's so many different counters to it, and there's a lot of guys just making reads out of it, I mean, Pat Shatler, that's a that's a great screen, wide base, really two great screens because he sets that initial back screen too. Again, not screening air, going to find a body. That's how you get guys open. And then Braden Carlson, that's just a great job getting up into a shot. And again, most of these threes he's been making in the pull-ups, they're not really hitting much other than net. Uh, that's kind of how it's been this spring. Uh, there's a turnover. Again, good activity there. And let's have to actually go back a little bit. This is why I think positioning is almost more important than anything else on defense. The only thing I would say is more important is communication, and I think communication and positioning go hand in hand. Right? He's starting to make his moves. You already see right now Braden Carlson starting to creep up into that gap. You see uh, Aberley's ready to go help. Uh, Schaller could maybe be a step or two off just because that guy hasn't done anything from out there. But I'm in the right spot. He didn't even have to work to get that steal because he was in the right positioning. And here ball gets kicked. Love that extra pass. Just, just so much unselfishness with this team. I mean, that's, to me, that's the biggest thing that stands out. I mean, you look at the way that Braden Carlson had been shooting this game. If, if he took this shot, nobody in the gym would say this is a bad shot, right? This guy on him, the way he's been feeling it and shooting it, it's not a bad shot. You pass it up to get a guy a wide open three in the corner, though. That's, that's what 9-0 that's what looks like. That's kind of what you would like to see out of your team. And another thing, you know, throughout this whole video, you can only see a little bit of it. The energy on the bench from the players, from the coaches, it's just a collective want to see other guys on the team win. And I think that that is something that you cannot fake. And that's something that is really crucial for any successful team. And I think for an AAU program in particular, one of the things I always look for to see how tight a team is, is the bench reaction is some of these extra effort plays, extra passes. You know, even if I'm not ending up on a highlight clip for making that extra pass, it's the basketball play to do to help us win. And the fact that it's a 23-point game, and maybe that pass isn't the end-all, be-all, but it's still the right play to make, that to me says a lot. Uh, and like I said, this fundamental U team has been excellent so far. Uh, there's a big... Uh, tournament coming up this weekend they'll get some more good competition but from a ua rise standpoint they have been you know from a record standpoint and really from a performance standpoint been the best team in the ua rise so far and with the togetherness and the different weapons from the shooting from the athleticism from the way that they guard as a team i mean that positioning and the help side and the activity on defense is really something that stands out uh, this is going to be one of the more fun teams to watch the rest of the spring and in particular in the summer um, as those, you know, July live periods come up.